Hi, everyone. Wow, it's quite a full room here right now. That's actually also my experience that whenever I do something super cool with lots of algorithms and numbers, it's, it's like great, and then you have like five people listening to you. And as soon as you work with images and show some pictures, like <laughs> we have twice as many people here as chairs, pretty much. OK, so my name is Vlad Dolezal. I'm a team lead data engineering at Home24. And today I'll be presenting a little bit about how we calculate recommendations based on product images. Home24 is Europe's largest e-commerce website for furniture, active in seven European countries and Brazil. And we have a large and diverse tech team where, among other things, on the data team we work with Scala, Spark, and many of the latest, greatest AWS technologies. Now, before I get to how we actually analyze product images to generate recommendations, I'd like to give a bit of background information about how we got the idea in the first place. So what we have here is a product detail page. And we're trying to populate this slider right here of similar products. So the way we do it, background information for most of you, is the best thing you can do is using collaborative filtering, so looking at what the actual users do. People look at this table, what do they end up clicking, what do they end up buying, what do they end up adding to cart, which is the advantage that you don't have to guess, you don't have to have any of your own biases, you just, show, you just do it data-driven, see what the real users do. But it has the disadvantage that when you have new products then that come online, they don't have enough user behavior yet. And also, since we're an e-commerce company, we're not limited by amount of floor space in a showroom or something which means that we can have a very broad catalog of products. But that also means that if we have 5,000 different sofas, then the user behavior on the website gets spread across all those 5,000 sofas. And so for many of them, we don't actually get enough user behavior to say, hmm, what would be a good recommendation? So again, background information for most of you. Yeah, background information for most of you is we use attribute-based recommendations. So we have attributes in the database that say, this here is a chair, it's made of wood, color brown, style modern, and so on, which has the advantage that it covers all products, but it also has challenges that we'll look at right now. So what we did is we built a little internal tool to visualize our results and the results of our various algorithms. And that's something I would encourage all of you to take the time to do, to build these sorts of visualizations for your system so you don't spend all day staring at various JSONs and statistical analyses, but actually see in front of you what it is that your algorithms are producing. So what we have here is, on the left, we have the product we want recommendations for, and these are the top five picks of the attribute-based recommender. So we see here that they're all tables, they're all roughly the same, same style, size, shape. So they're already pretty good recommendations, but maybe since the recommendation here, that the product here we want recommendations for, has a wooden top and metal legs, maybe we can think that this recommendation here might be actually a better match than these four here. So this is already suggesting maybe there's some space for improvement. And in fact, what we did is we visualized our click-through score on the recommendations. So what we do here is we have the recommendation slider, and we track for each recommendation we track which product we show in which position, which gives us an expected number of clicks on that product, because it's a well-known effect that people usually click on the first product more and then on the second more than on the third and so on. So we adjust the number of expected clicks for each product based on which position it was shown in the slider. And secondly, we track the actual number of clicks. And then comparing those two, we get a click-through score for all of those recommendations. So we see over here that the three ones here with a positive score are underrated which means they should be shown higher up in the recommendation slider than they are currently being shown. And we see all of them actually have this effect of having, being, looking very similar, having metal legs, having a similar color wood. And on the other hand here, the two recommendations with a negative score, they, they are being shown too high in the slider, so they should be shown lower. And we see that visually they don't quite match the table here, even though that based on the attributes, they probably match quite well. So we went and we looked at what kind of attributes and data we actually have in the database. And we found an example like this. Both of these tables are marked as color brown and material solid wood. But if you have a bunch of chairs in your home and you're trying to find a matching table, 
if the first one matches, then the second one probably doesn't, and vice versa. And this was the first thing that gave us this idea that maybe our content-based attributes, they just don't have enough detail, and we should see if we can somehow augment this information. And that's how we got the idea of using the product images to generate recommendations. So this was actually the first idea of our principal data architect, Marcos Rebello, sitting right there in the audience, trying to look humble. And so he got this idea, and he went to all of us, and me and our product owner and so on, we all said, hmm, using the images for recommendations, don't you need like a team of three PhDs and a whole year to build something sensible? And he was like, no, you don't. He remembered some research papers you read somewhere, and he went off and he built a prototype in one day to just show that this idea is possible, and it was actually giving surprisingly good results and convinced all of us to give this a try. So the way we use the product images to calculate recommendations is we extract the main colors that we see in each image. Because as we saw in those previous examples, although the attributes say they are similar, visually when you just look at the image from the colors and so on, it doesn't match quite well. And so we extract the main colors. The way we do this is we ignore the background pixels, and then we run a simple k-means clustering algorithm on the remaining pixels, and then we take the 10 centroids of those 10 clusters. The reason this works so well is that for this image over here, for example, it has lots of yellow pixels and quite a few of those blackish dark green pixels, and not so many of these reddish, orangish, and so on. And so we see at the centroids that end up being produced, we have lots of values right here in the greenish, blackish area, and we have lots of centroids close to each other on the yellow area, and not so many in the reddish, orangish area. And this means that when you end up later comparing two images and seeing how similar they are, you're already automatically giving weight, more weight to the pixels that appear more often in the image. So just to visualize what this actually looks for the products we were looking at, this is the product we want recommendations for, and the 10 representative colors for this image. Then this is the top pick of the attribute-based recommender, and again, it's representative colors. And finally, the most underrated recommendation based on click-through rate, so that's one that we should be pushing higher up in the slider, but we're currently not. And this has already given us an indication that we're on the right track and that mixing in this color signal will probably improve our recommendation system. So how do we actually calculate the similarity between two products based on the images? We've extracted the main 10 colors for each of them. And then what we do, first we define the distance between two colors to be the Euclidean distance between them in the lab color space. The reason we use lab and not RGB is that it's a color space that's designed in such a way that the simple geometric distance between two colors is very, it's very similar to what humans perceive as the two colors being similar. And then after that, what we do is we look at the first color on product A. We compare it to all 10 colors on product B, see which is the most similar one, and we call that the minimum color distance for the first color on product A. Then we take the second one here, again, compare it to all 10, see which is the most similar one, and that gives us the minimum distance for the second color, and so on and so forth. We sum up all 10 values for the first product, and this gives us this kind of measure from product A to product B. And because this is not symmetrical and we want to end up with a notion of distance at the end, we end up doing this comparison both ways, and we put together this little formula for the score so that when the products are very similar, that means this function here is close to zero. And so we get a high number here. And similarly, if they're very dissimilar, we have a big distance right here. Then we end up with a low score because we're dividing by a large number. And we put a one on the bottom to avoid dividing by zero. So what does this actually give us as results? Again, we have the top picks of the attribute-based recommender. We combine this with the top five picks of the color recommender, or indeed, a lot more, I'm just visualizing here the top five. And eventually the combined results look like this. And right now, for this particular example, you might actually say that the color recommender by itself looks better than the combined results. But we tested this and combining the two gives us the best results overall. So before I get to the actual results, like how much change we saw in click-through rate and so on, I want to share some fun challenges we faced along the way. One of them was that if you pick a random, a random image for a product, you sometimes get an image like this, and sometimes an image like this. Oops. And so if you end up analyzing the second image, then you'll end up thinking that your table has a bunch of yellow and orange colors and so on, and completely throws you off. 
And the fun thing is, fun, is that the background pixels on the clean images, they're not actually the same color. That's usually slightly off-white, and due to image compression, it's not all the same color. And so what we ended up doing is analyzing the border of the image and saying, okay, if all of those pixels are within a certain small standard deviation of each other, then that's the background color, and we get to remove that and actually do the color analysis, and we find a clean image. Another challenge we faced was that something I already mentioned is that we have a broad assortment of products. So let's say we have 5,000 sofas, and we would look, want to compare each of them to every other sofa, then that gives us 5,000 times 5,000 comparisons, 25 million. It starts getting a bit computationally expensive. And so we thought about a few ways of solving this. One would be to actually run this expensive computation once for all the products and somehow cache the results. That would definitely be doable. Another one we considered was instead of extracting the colors for each image separately, we would kind of do a global extraction and get a palette for all of our products. That would make it easier to later say what is the similarity between two products. But in the end, we just ended up reusing a solution that we already had placed for the attribute best recommender, which is using locality-sensitive hashing uh, based on the product attributes. And locality-sensitive hashing is a probabilistic algorithm where when you have a large dimensional space and you're trying to figure out which things in there are similar to each other and you don't want to compare all of them, what you do is you basically do a few different projections, lower dimensional projections on the high dimensional space, and each of your products ends up sorted to three or four so-called buckets. And then later, when you're trying to find the most similar products, you don't have to look at all 5,000 sofas. You just look at the few hundred that ended up in the same buckets as the product you're looking at, and that gives you a fairly reasonable chance of getting the most similar products. So the results we saw after implementing this and mixing this into our ensemble of algorithms was a 10% uplift in click-through rate, a 12% uplift in click-through rate for products with low user behavior, which is the ones that we were especially targeting, the ones that we have to rely on the content-based recommendations because we don't have enough user behavior to say what are good recommendations. And finally, an overall 4% conversion rate uplift The key takeaways from this, I would say, is that firstly, take the time to build these visualization tools to see what your intermediate results look like and what your algorithms are actually producing. Secondly, plan to iterate because you won't get things perfect and think about what non-obvious data you have that you could use to add to your existing model. Because using the product images, it wasn't one of our first ideas. But when we visualized the results and we saw the gaps that we had in our algorithms that we somehow seemed to be missing this color information, that's when you actually got the idea to use this data. So that's it. Thank you. If this sounds like an interesting kind of problem to work on, then get in touch. We're always hiring, always looking for competent engineers. And I think we have a few minutes for some questions. So just raise your hand and I'll bring the microphone to you. Hi, thank you for an interesting talk. Um, I was wondering whether you have looked into creating a, div a diversity of recommendations and uh, whether you would have ideas to explore the image vector space for that as well. Mm. So we have it on our roadmap to be testing the diversity of recommendations, making them not all look quite the same. But so far, we just didn't get into that yet because we had so many other interesting projects to work on. So we plan to look into that, but we haven't done that just yet. Yeah, thank you for that uh, amazing talk. I was wondering how you deal with new products that uh, you could not uh, sort into buckets beforehand. Uh, how do you deal with them? Ah, okay. Sorry, I think that wasn't clear. The way we do the sorting into buckets was based on the product attributes. So as soon as a new product goes live, we already have the attributes in the database that say, this here is a chair, color brown, style, modern, and so on. And then based on those attributes, we can see which other product is probably similar to. Do you have any idea how you can incorporate that to uh, deal with complementary items uh, shown in recommendations? 
So not always show the similar things, but also things that uh, the person uh, might need in the future. So something for this table. Mm. That's a good idea. So what we've done so far is we implemented this for the uh, similar products. So if you're looking at a table to implement this for other tables, we're looking into implementing this for matching products as well. But that's a little bit more involved. And again, it's on our roadmap. And yeah, so, so far we haven't explored this whole idea of matching colors and which things fit well together or not. So far we just look at things that look the same are probably a good recommendation for the similar product slider. Um, I have a question not about the clean images, but about the mood images. Mm -hmm. uh, do you also try to calculate which mood images would be more enticing for the users to, uh, to actually buy a product? Because, you know, when you show an item in a context, it shows you as well how it could look in their homes, for example. Okay, yeah, so we don't do this on our team. What, what we're doing here is really doing the, populating the recommendation slider. But we do have a marketing team that's always testing in which order do they show things, what do they use for the ads, and so on. So I'm not quite familiar with the details of how exactly they're doing it, but they're definitely testing which images to show, and so on. No more questions? Okay, well, thank you, Vlad, for okay. your presentation, and thank you all for coming. Thank you.